truck. Um, what, what, what is this? Are y'all serious right now? Like, what, what is this? What in, in the world? He, look, 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 y'all. That's nuts from his last trip. Little nuts right here. Okay. Pet peeve. OMG. Okay, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Wait. What? Why? Why do we have all this? What? I can't even find the license and registration if they ask me for registration. I don't know where it is. I can't. Look. Look, look. This is our glove compartment. These are receipts from last year. Okay. Mixed up with napkins, which is cool. We have napkins in there. But what is what is this? What is what, what is that, y'all? Pet peeve. Pet peeve. That's pet peeve number one. Okay, I'm gonna be back with more. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So you saw the fruit in the console, right? Okay, this is the other pet peeve that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that there was a whole bunch of fruit and um, paper towels. Here's the other part that of my pet peeve. Okay, here it is, here it is. Okay, so he wants to have fruit, right? Okay, that's cool. Why the whole roll of paper towel? What? 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 <laughs> Look at the, one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece, five piece, six piece. What? Why do you need all this paper towel? We literally go through a roll of paper towel a day because of my husband. That's my second pet peeve is that we go through. I get it. I get it. I get it. He wants to wrap up his fruit nice and hygienic. But 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 really? Like really? All this is a quarter of a roll or an eighth. Something. That's a pet peeve. I had to come back with that because my husband will take a whole roll of paper towels, y'all. Just for a fruit for fruit for a little plum. <laughs> Did you see the little plum? It was a little plum. He could have. And the thing about it is, guys, we buy the selector size. Hold this up, Sai. Hold this up for me. Pull it. Pull it. We we buy the. Pull it again. We buy the selector size. See, he could have just put the plum in that, like that, right there. That that would have been really perfect, right? The selector size allows you to take the perforated parts of the you know, paper towel so that you don't take as much as he took but he does this all the time no matter what and then I come home like why, don't, why are we out of paper towel when I just bought the Costco brand uh, 12,000 rolls <laughs> I don't get it I don't get it what is your biggest pet peeve of your spouse that's one of mine but we got more coming to you more coming to you Okay, y'all, pet peeve number three. Y'all ready for this one? Pet peeve number three. Okay, so my husband got some pumpkin bread, pump, pump, pumpkin loaf. See it right there? The pumpkin loaf cake that we love, the pumpkin loaf cake. That's a tongue twister. So why do I have to know that he had a piece of it? There's the knife and wash it then put it back in the sink there's the napkins he probably put the pumpkin loaf in it. there's the crumbs right there help me understand why I have to know what he ate where he ate it and how he ate it and then here's the other thing this isn't closed this this needs to be closed but he just leaves it open just you know just if there's a critter it's getting in there forget to keep it fresh he just it's not important pet peeve number three okay Sonia's pet peeve is is true I admit that you will know what I ate based on the crumbs that are left on the table you will know what I ate in the vehicle based on the crumbs that are in the ashtray Yes, I admit to that, and you're going to find out why I do what I do and how Sonya has coped with that for 24 years. But let's talk about my pet peeve for a minute. Let's talk about mine. My pet peeve is this, time. I believe that you need to be at a place when you're designed to be at that place. 
if the appointment is at one o'clock, you can't just run up into the appointment at 1258. You can't even just go in there at 110 and say, hey, I'm here and be okay with that. Let's talk also about flying, getting to the airport. If the flight is at 3 p.m., I believe that you need to be in the waiting area at 1 p.m. Waiting because gates change. They may make an announcement, you're in Chicago airport and we're at gate C5 and they say your flight has been changed to F14. You have to run across to the other side of the airport to get there on time. Why do that? Why do you have to do that? Why can't you just be there early to expect the unexpected? Some of you agree with that. Some of you understand what I'm saying. Send your comments and agree with me that that pet peeve is worse than her pet peeve. Is it worse? We're going to talk about it. So now, check this out. We have an appointment today at 1 p.m. to get massages. 1 p.m. It's already scheduled on the calendar. We live 20 minutes away. Let's see if we're going to get there at 1 p.m. or 12.45. Can we sit and wait in the lobby? I like to sit and wait in the lobby. I like to, to drink the, the, the lime mango water that's sitting there waiting for me. I like to smell the, the candles that are in, in the lobby while I wait. I don't like to run into this appointment at 1 p.m. and then they rush you back to the back of the room and they throw you on the table and they give you a massage. That's just like poor foreplay. Time is my pet peeve. And my wife, and I'll say it in a, in a, in a nice way, she's challenged with that. See, over the years I've learned how to say things that don't hurt. She's challenged with that and we're gonna talk about, she's gonna share why she has that challenge but watch and see if we make it to this appointment at 12:45, or we're running through the door at 1 p.m pet peeves that's what we're talking about okay it's tea time right now it's 12 12 p.m the appointment's at 1 p.m i like to get there at 12:45, which means it's about maybe 30 minutes before the time that I need to be sitting in the, in the lobby of the massage place. Don't look like it's gonna happen. We may make it there at one, but let's take a look. I heard water running. Water's running. Babe, how you doing? I just want to say good morning. Good morning. Hey, you okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Guess where we are? All right, what time you got? I'm not sure what time it is right now. Where you going? Why are you running? Why are you running right now? This is not the time. What time, what time you got? Oh, see, she, you got one on one. Hold on. See, she's trying to run right now. I feel like I'm on a, a reality show. See, she's she running right now. Look at that. One on one. Okay. Okay. Sorry we're late. You guys are all time. It's okay. Sorry, a little late.
Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. Thank you for watching this episode. This episode is entitled, And the Greatest of These Are the Pet Peeves. And the greatest of these are the pet How do you kind of think of that, like right before we come on? Like, because you were doing all my pet peeves right before we came on. <laughs> Go ahead, what you got? So thank you for watching. <laughs> we thought about doing this episode because all week our pet peeves have been getting to each other. Hmm. And so if you didn't know, one of my biggest pet peeves, you saw some of the pet peeves in the previews. The pet peeve that I have before we vlog is that Derek has to get out all his nervous energy. So I literally wait like 30 minutes before he's ready to, to well, record. Well, actually, you don't wait for 30 minutes because I'm usually ready and you take 30 minutes to get down there, which and is my pet peeve. And then after 30 minutes, I sit here. <sighs> <laughs> we got to get through this vlog. Give them some information. Oh, I didn't even do the comb pet peeve. I missed that one. <laughs> he literally had to pull something to get the comb so that he could comb his hair right before the recording and he just combed his hair because it's my hair and so i was that, pet peeve okay pet peeve. so but what, are, my hair, but what my are your greatest pet peeves but it's my hair what are, what are your greatest pet peeves so derek and i have see he's acting out i'm not a, i'm just saying it's my hair can't handle why you can't, can't my, handle the truth why you get, your, get your fingers <laughs> in my face why don't you step off why you gotta get your you know, put your fingers in my face so man. so when we uh when we first started doing our ministry, um, we started giving couples and individuals that are in relationships this phrase, and people thought it was a typo, but it really wasn't. This is actually what we meant. Sweat the small stuff. And people kept emailing us, oh, we think you messed up. You meant don't sweat the small stuff. No, we meant sweat the small stuff because the small stuff come in things like Pet peeves, the greatest of the sweating of the small stuff is pet peeves because the pet peeves are the things that irritate you to the point where it can change your disposition and and then sometimes project back onto your spouse. It can change the whole marriage. It, it really I can. Mean, people, so most of the times when our clients come to us, it's about something huge, something big, something mm -hmm trust, communication, infidelity. infidelity. So they come to us and we often see the pet peeves that are the things that are getting on each other's nerves. And they build. And they, and they build and they, right. and they don't know how to deal with it, such so, as the comb. Or what you saw in the videos, crumbs that I leave. Sonya's not being on time, so yeah. So what we encourage you to do if you are familiar with pet peeves and you can identify some of your own that you have with your spouse what we encourage you to do is go a little bit deeper mm. derek and i are behavioralists we study behavior which means that we believe that there's a behavior to every there's a reason i'm sorry to every behavior um and we can't always pinpoint all of the reasons but we think that when you have the pet peeves the behaviors that you're seeing are coming from somewhere. So we want to encourage you to kind of do some investigating, do some thought provoking, you know, process so that when your spouse does do the pet peeve, you're a little bit more tolerant of where it's coming from. So you want to give an example? Well, we, when we go to yours, where does yours come from? Okay, so you saw the video about time. My issue is that, here's my pet peeve, you saw it, but I'm gonna say it in front of you, that I, I don't think that Sonia uh, is, uh, what's the word that I use? Capable <laughs> of true. being on, this is my perspective. Capable, how can that's you say that when I've been on time? This is my pet peeve. But I'm just saying, how We interrupt our program to bring you this important message.
Derek has a reason for why he has to get to the airport four hours early. And I have a reason why I resist that. So I'll tell you the reason why I resist that. And then Derek's going to tell you the reason why he feels the need to get to the airport early. When we get to the airport early and we have to sit for about two, and most of the time it's more than two hours at the gate, I'm thinking about all the other things that I could have done that I didn't get to do before I left at home because it didn't afford me the time. There's so many other things because I am a daughter and a mother and a business owner and a, a, a sister and a niece and a friend and a therapist and I have clients. I'm thinking about all the things that I could have done while we just literally watch time pass. So that's for the choleric woman. That's always going to be the challenge is sitting for two and a half hours doing absolutely nothing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What is the reason that you feel the need to get to the airport? And I respect so that. Early? I, I respect. I respect. I respect that she's a choleric. I respect and I understand. I accept. I value all that. Um, I do know that for her to sit and nothing is happening, it goes against her grain. Mm -hmm. I got it. And I understand. I respect it. And I've made some adjustments over the years to accommodate that. So it's not really a four hours. I've come down to about maybe three hours. I've accommodated because I understand that. I wanted you to share why you feel the need to get to the airport so early. Well, because, because my training, uh, I was in the Marine Corps. I was a cop. Um, uh, my father, even, he valued time. He really did. And, and a lot of that has to do with my, my core because if you're not prepared for something to happen prepared for the unexpected and that's how my training was preparing for the unexpected so yes if I have a flight at 2 o'clock we live in northern part of Georgia which is 45 minutes from the airport add another hour to that which is traffic so it's an hour and 45 minutes just in traffic Throw an accident in there, you throw in another 45 minutes. So for me, I have to put all those things in perspective, as well as getting to the airport, uh, the, the whole TSA, the whole process. So for me, I have to put in extra time to prepare for the unexpected. Uh, and that's just one thing. Just airport is one thing. My main pet peeve and is, is just if there was an appointment at a certain time. Sonia has had the tendency to push the envelope to get to the appointment. Right on time, a little bit before, very suddenly we're really late. It's right on time, as you saw in the video, the massage. We weren't, we were late. We got there at 104 or something like that. And to Sonia and everybody else, oh, it's okay. But you know what people do? They they don't say you late, you know? But the reality is that there's another appointment at two o'clock right after us. So for me, it's, it's, it's the point of getting to a place, unwinding, relaxing. So it's a combination of where it, where it comes from. It's my training and my understanding about preparing and, and, and being prepared for the unexpected. And it's also valuing other people's time. That's the other part of it. Because if someone says be here at 2 o'clock and we come at 2 o'clock or 2.01 or 2.02, to me, it's not valuing someone else's time. In addition to, I like to get to a place where I'm relaxed. The massage, they have free water, it's nice fruited, fruity, fruity water. Sit there and smell the aroma and, and sit there and catch the ambiance and read a magazine. I don't want to run in there, check in, and they throw you on a slab and give you a massage. So that's just me. I need time to prepare my mind and my spirit for what I'm about to receive, whether it's a meeting and this and that. So that's my reason why. So I know, I understand, I accept, and I value everything Derek said I do, which is why, for the most part, I try to be on time. But there's a deeper route to the airport thing. Now, as far as time is concerned, yes, I, I'm always, I got 20 balls in the air. So sometimes one of the balls that drops is being there at, 
a minute before or five minutes before. That's, that just comes by nature of being a choleric woman with a million things to do. But the deeper issue for Derek, that he's not going to tell you all this, but the deeper issue is fear of not having control over the situation, which I do know, understand, accept, and I do value. Um, because remember, in our previous vlogs, Derek's temperament is phlegmatic. Phlegmatics are one of the four temperaments. For those that are just tuning in, go back and check our episodes, our previous episodes. But phlegmatics thrive on stability and support, which means that when things are in a controlled environment, they do better. Cholerics thrive on challenge and uh, activity. When most activity, most challenge, that's when we thrive. So everything that Derek thrives on is just the opposite for what I thrive on. If we're running late, I th I'm thriving on that. Let's run. <laughs> Let's get on that shuttle. Let's beat the odds. I mean, literally, cholerics thrive on that. And that's why we teach knowing your temperaments because our temperaments are so different. Now, Derek's second temperament is my first one. His second temperament is choleric, but definitely not when it comes to time, travel, or having to uh, be out of control. Well, if it is a fear of control, I have to... I have fear to, of losing. Fear of losing control, I think that's a small part of it. Um, but the question is now, how do you accommodate? The question is, she, she knows all those things, she values it. The question is, how do you accommodate that? How do you just, or how do you value that? That if you know it, do you continue to push the envelope mm -hmm. and get there at the massage place at 102? Or do you say, you know, at some point I'm going to get there and I, have to, I, I, I want to hear you in regards to why that is. And I heard that part, but I do believe it's also a deeper issue for Sonia, other than what she said, in addition to what she said. Because as you see on the video, it hasn't changed for 24 years. It may have decreased, it may have gotten better, but just like the crumbs, you, I definitely want you to get into you know, your pet peeve uh, for that. That was me for 25, 24 years. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do, does she say, I know that's what it is. I know that's the deeper issue. So what can I do to, to put into my world to make sure that we're not walking into the massage place at 102. What can I do? Apologies are cool. She apologized, I'm sorry, you know, we, and, and it becomes like lighthearted. And, but I, that's still my core. That's still my pet peeve. So it's continuing to be violated even though Sonia vi values it, but it continues to happen every once, not like it was before, mm -hmm. but it still happens. And when it does happen, then we have to figure out how, I had to figure out, I had to put inside of me, how do I cope? with that, knowing in my mind that it may happen again. Right. And it may not happen again. How do I cope with that? Count to 10, take a deep breath, whatever. As long as it doesn't impact us, as long as it didn't impact us going to get a massage, we fighting in the place. We argue. we didn't do that, it was cool, it was a nice massage. We, it was beautiful, we went to lunch after that. So, it, so we have to talk about, we wanna talk about, well, going to your pet peeve, because I don't wanna you know, give you time to deal with that. Well, I, well, the point that you're making is a valid one. How do we cope with it? Um, when, when I know that it's something that has violated Derek's core, I apologize. And I say, I'll, I'll work on that. Um, this actually is the first time we've ever walked into a massage late. We're usually there early, you know, because of that reason. But today I overslept because I was on call. And so I didn't get up in time to get to the massage place on time because I worked till seven this morning. Um, so there, sometimes they're extenuating circumstances. And I, and I know that that's why I wasn't too bothered by it because I do know that she worked and that was a, those were all ingredients in me processing how I'm going to be smart. Right, right, right. But I think the key point is acknowledging it. You know, acknowledging that this thing has uh, violated the person that you love and their core and being able to speak to it without excuses. Um, sometimes there are reasons like mine. Mine was legitimate, but I start to speak to it. Um, <laughs> some of the things that um, we do, we, we make jokes from it. 
we, we joke about it. Like the crumbs thing, I made jokes about that. That's been 24 years. The girls, our daughters get on him about that. So I can pass the baton because now he's got pressure before, besides just me, he's got the, the girls also fussing with him about that because they are neat freaks when it comes to the kitchen. They, they, well, the kitchen is their chore. So when they come in the kitchen and they see that, you know, they're fussing. So I kind of can relinquish that to them. So they don't have the same dynamic I have with Derek. They fuss and Derek's just like, whatever, this is my kitchen. <laughs> you know, clean it kind of thing. But with, with regard to the ones that have been 24 years and going, you definitely owe it to your spouse to make an effort to make some changes, to figure out why it happens, and to then acknowledge it when it does. I think they want to hear more about the crumbs. That was that was funny, but significant. Mm, Where does it come from? But I, I really, I know we have a little bit of time left, but we want to keep people yes. long. But yes, your so so my pet peeve about your time. Paraphrase what you said as far as where does it come from? Oh well, from okay. So the first part that I said earlier is, I I have things to do. So when I'm waiting, I don't like to wait. That's what it about boils down to. Why? I don't like to wait. Where does that come from? Because I have a lot to do all the time. I would think that you would want to slow down and, and smell the roses and not worry about I should, but it's right. been conditioned. Okay. It's been conditioned. Remember, so I am the, I'm I'm the middle child there of a go. family with a sister who was sick from age five and I was three. We were always going. Right. Always going, 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 going. When when Carla got sick and we had to stop and do the hospital thing, that meant that when I came back, I had to catch up with the chores. I had to catch up with the homework. I had to catch up with the... So I've always been conditioned to go, go, go. Right. Right? Part of my temperament is to go, go, go. That's part of my temperament. But I've also been conditioned to go, go, go. So sitting and waiting, if, if you look at the list of um, weaknesses in the choleric, one of the top five says they can't relax. Right. Right. So I have to. I have to tell my. Which is why I booked the massage, y'all. Right. They, we have these free massages, and I was like, we're getting them because I know this about myself. So if it just, it's just the, the challenge is getting there. So so <laughs> it's conditioned. So that we can be relaxed. It's, it's yeah. conditioned. Yeah. You're, you've been conditioned. So explain then. If there is an appointment or a time that we have to be somewhere or do something mm -hmm. and you push the envelope to, to that time, explain that. Well, I think, again, I, I, I have a different value about what time means than it does for Derek. Derek right. I didn't grow up in the military. Right. Things don't devastatingly ha happen. Is that a word? Things, <laughs> things don't happen that's devastating in my world if you're off by a minute or two. In his world, it does. Right. So time Boy, there you go. means something very different to me. There you go. Time is very relative. Now they're learning something. Right. Now they're getting it after 25 <laughs> minutes of all this. That's good. Right. Because so someone he's been needs conditioned yes. for time. I've not been conditioned for time. So we have two different value systems on time. Right. Right. That's it. Yeah, because I so. say, this is my theory, guys. I say... Nobody's gonna die. I'm not a doctor. I'm not, you know, I'm not a right, lawyer. I'm right. not, nobody, the world is not gonna stop because I got somewhere five minutes and late. And for me, someone has died. Right. The world has stopped. There has right. been some type of catastrophic right. situation right. where time wasn't, it. ooh, I'm going deep. I'm about yeah. to make a tear in my eye. Okay, go on. I can't right now. <laughs> but really, yeah. from my experience in, 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 in law enforcement, in the military, Time was an issue mm -hmm. because something catastrophic has happened. Right, right. Well, because you're guarding the nation. Mm. You know, they were training you to be sensitive to emergencies. So, so how could we? Because we're manner. running out of time. I'm like, boom, we got time, man. Huh? We, we, got we, don't, we don't. I gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah. But I want to get to the point about about the crumbs and my issue and okay. those kind of things. Go there. But what do you have? You have a question about that. Well, no, you... you were going to give us the reason why oh, yeah, you do yeah, the crumbs yeah. thing. Some of you probably say he's a slob. Because <laughs> they saw clean the up, car. Clean up the crumbs, man. What's up? I know. Crumbs inside the I console yeah, in the so, truck? Some of y'all OCD anyway. Y'all yeah, need yeah. free, so y'all well, go to the extreme. that was nasty. He's not even OCD. So. 
<laughs> Nasty. So, so I, I thought about this, and this is actually the first time, not the first time, but I had to really dig deep and think about why. I, I think a lot of different reasons that I function is hurry up and wait, or hurry up and get something done, or hurry up and cleaning up later. So again, military and police is like, all right, come on, you gotta go, you know, grab, let's go. We gotta get out of that area before anything happens. You gotta go and, and just go and worry about that later. Somebody's gonna take care of that later. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of that has to do with, I'm still programmed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, no, it's not 1982, but I'm still programmed. And I think that kind of training and that kind of, of, of mindset is embedded in me. It's like I, I haven't been deprogrammed yet. And it's not all the time that I do that. You know, the kids get on me and my wife. So most of the time, I've got, I was tired. Honestly, I got a piece of cake, boom, I fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> so most of the time, like Sonia, most of the time she is conscious to get to a place on time. She's conscious to get to the airport with me on time. Most of the time we do, and most of the time I clean it up. But I think because I'm in a, I'm in a scenario of the husband and the father and all these kind of things, I'm juggling all these things in the air, to me crumbs are not important. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to provide mm -hmm. for my family, I'm trying to take care of my kids. My daughter's car broke down on the side of the road. I'm not trying to clean up no crumbs. Okay, I got to get out the truck and run. And I leave a You're peach in there. Deal with the big fish. I'm trying to deal with the world on my shoulders and some crumbs. I'll clean it up when I when I detail the car on Friday morning. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. So that's where it comes from. Yeah, that's good. You saw. That was good. You cracked the case. I cracked the case. Okay, <laughs> what case in your house do you need to crack? Because you saw us crack ours, and some of this is real time, you know, because yeah. we saved our theories for the vlog. Right. Um, because, again, as you guys know, we don't rehearse our vlogs. That's the point of vlogs. So um, the greatest of these are pet peeves, you know, because those are the greatest things that get in the way of marriage and a harm harmonious marriage. Right. Um, they come from somewhere. Uh, they should be addressed and acknowledged. So now that you know. What, what you gonna, gonna do, do with, with it? Thank you for watching. That was that was deep, man. Mm -hmm. I have to think more one. about that. Yeah. I lay so on we, the couch and get some we, therapy. We challenge you to go deeper. Go deeper. <laughs> go deeper. You all, you two can be behaviorless in your own right, right. at home. Because in there's your a reason marriage. why. Yeah. About the pet peeves. Yeah, there is a reason. Right. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Uh, this is this video is a little bit longer than normal, but we Forgive thank you for us. watching. Yeah. Uh, continue to share it. We want you to share the video. So thank you once again. God bless you. Until and next time. We'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. I'm not capable. Uh, this, I'm using words that may not be appropriate. Oh, okay. This okay. Because, I mean, I mean capable word. means you haven't seen it done. To you. So, here's here's the pet peeve that I have. People. Here's the pet peeve that I have about my wife. It's being somewhere at a time that we're supposed to be. And also, if we're traveling, you saw the video and my explanation. If a flight is at two, I have the expectation to be there. At 12. It, Lies. Derek expects to be there at 10, y'all. Okay, so she's speaking for me, so I'm going to tell uh, you. So that was the beginning of the disagreement. And pretty much what it was, was that because sewing is principle-based and what I said was inaccurate. In all honesty, I, I spoke to facts that weren't really facts. Um, and so Sonia responded to that, and in her response when she says lies, I interpreted her saying lies as if she was calling me a liar. Now, I got upset, and you don't think about those things in the moment of conversation. Uh, and, and, and the point we're making about this is that I do know Sonia's principle base, and so she didn't say it the way I really needed for her to say it. 
she didn't come off and say, well, you know, Derek, think about that for a minute. You know, you are you saying that you get to the airport two hours before? Are you saying that you like to sit in the waiting area for two hours? So it was a misunderstanding in regards to what I was saying. And um, in all honesty, you know, Sonia, her response wasn't the best response at the time. But hindsight, I understand why she responded that way. And being his wife for 24 years, I know that sometimes my ability or my tendency rather to lightly um, uh, correct or or speak opposite to whatever the point is, sometimes it can rub Derek the wrong way. But as you see, I was laughing, I was smiling. So for me, it was still a positive thing that I was doing. That's that's the conflict that we used to run into earlier in our marriage where, you know, I spoke to stuff right off the bat, but it would rub Derek the wrong way. And it kind of st started to rub him the wrong way, but I wasn't really addressing that because it didn't impact me the way that it impacted him. Right. So that was the beginning stages of the disagreement. Me, so I'm going to tell uh, I'm you. Not, I'm telling you facts. Everybody that knows Derek, come on, y'all, put some comments on there to, we, today. We're going to argue about this. Play, put some about comments. Pet. Really, really, honey. Ten. Okay. Yes. Like because I, because like, like like I said, I'm going to finish what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to finish you what I'm saying. You can finish, but be factual. Well, I may not be factual. Honey, we're, we've never gotten to the end. So as you can see here, I'm enjoying this conflict. I feed off of conflict. Calyrics love conflict. So I'm getting a, a kick out of this dialogue. Um, but Derek avoids conflict. He doesn't like conflict. And he's actually becoming defensive. He's escalating. But I'm not even really catching that because I'm still in, you know, fun, humor, conversation mode. Right. And our temperaments play a big part in this. Um, I don't like conflict. I don't like uh, debating. Uh, my brain, you know, uh, a man's brain is different than a woman's brain based on how they communicate. And so I was becoming very overwhelmed with the conversation. And to be honest with you, women are far more superior verbally than man, than a man. And I felt intimidated. And so based on that conversation, I was continuing to escalate. Even from the last clip that you saw, Song is enjoying every second of it. <laughs> she's smiling, she's laughing, and I'm getting very upset about it. So it's important to recognize um, that the other person and just knowing that it's not intentional as far as wanting to argue or disagree it's just how we we're made up and we have to continue to recognize the other person's strengths and the other person's weaknesses and catching the cues so it was so it doesn't go to a point where it becomes conflictual for two hours before it's time to leave. Ever, I, I, ever, ever. I'm ever. going to finish my sentence. Okay, tell the truth. I, it don't matter, tell I'm going to finish my sentence. My pet peeve, like I said, is if we're traveling, if the flight is at two, I want to be at the airport in the lobby, in the sitting area, two hours before the plane leaves. As you can see, I'm continuing to escalate, and Sonya's having a good old time with it. <laughs> and, and again, it's it's at a point where I'm, I'm unable to stop myself. Um, and, and that has a lot to do with my gender as a man. Uh, in the past, Sonya has been one to uh, communicate with passion. And, and in the past, I felt like I didn't have a voice. And so as you, if you notice, I kept on saying, I'm going to finish what I'm saying. That comes from a past experiences that we've had where I was not able to say what I wanted to say. And oftentimes men uh, isolate themselves. They find poor coping mechanisms because they feel like they can't say anything. And most, and sometimes that's not the case. I think sometimes that if we're able to express how we feel, then our wives will be able to understand us a little bit better. So I, I think sometimes it's, and, and for us, this is not intentional. So he's not intentionally to escalate me. But we do know that there are times when 
a wife may not understand the psychic and the makeup of a man, so they'll continue to get their point across without any concern about how the husband feels. Well, and it also goes back to a root issue that uh, Derek and I had years ago with when Derek would come. He, Derek came into the marriage um, feeling sensitive to criticism um, because of his past relationship with his dad before it was mended. Mm, yeah. And when we talk about pet peeves, you're kind. Of, I'm kind of bordering on criticizing him. Even though we're talking about pet peeves, what I didn't realize that I realize now is that it's starting to rub him the wrong way because it's bringing up familiar feelings of being criticized. Mm, I didn't think about it that until just now. Mm-hmm. I did feel criticized, and that was it right there. Mm-hmm. But I was unable to say it because I became a, a slave to that moment. So I couldn't say that at the time, but looking back now, I realized that It felt like criticism, but it really wasn't. If we're traveling, if the flight is at two, I want to be at the airport in the lobby, in the sitting area, two hours before the plane leaves. Okay, fair enough. I I was trying to say that before you were cutting me off. Looking back at that video, it just, it just cringed my spirit because I didn't realize what I said to Sonia was was like that, and I just want to apologize to you, Sonia, for saying what I said to you um, in the manner that I said it and what I said, so I apologize. No, oh, thank you for apologizing. I didn't feel offended, but I appreciate the apology. Yeah. You know, you're welcome. And that, and that gives you some idea of when someone is escalated and you saw the progression of my escalation, and that's the effects of it. That's what comes out. And sometimes we don't have the, the, the video to look back at what we've done and the hurt that we've done. It may not have been hurt to Sonya, but I caused damage at that, you know, at some level. And so I'm glad that I have a chance to look at the video to see that. But there's some couples who have caused damage, especially after the other person has said, you know, I understand what you're saying. So it's important for me to see this particular clip to go back and just take responsibility and apologize. Uh, and then move on. Some people get stuck in that hurt place and they, and they just get paralyzed and, and not even accept the apology, not, you know, realizing that the person could make the mistake again and again and again. But that's marriage and that's the purpose of forgiveness and healing. So thank you for accepting my apology. Oh, you're welcome. You see how we disagreed about that? The point is that we want to help couples to identify their pet peeve, where the root comes from, and then how to cope with it. So we wanted to do this behind the scenes narration because as you can see, talking about pet peeves can get a little heated. And sometimes the whole point of discussing the feelings around pet peeves can be lost Um, based on other feelings that come up while trying to discuss those issues. Uh, We are no different. Uh, We are, you know, most people don't like their flaws and their faults to be pointed out. And even when you do it under the best circumstances, it still can evoke feelings that you have to be mindful of how to respond to your spouse with. Because if they are the pet peeves, how do you acknowledge them? How do you work on them? You know, how do you become mutually agreeable to what they are if you are not able to dialogue without the nuances that you just saw. So we hope that this was a teachable um, clip for you guys to see. And that's why we decided to put it on part two of the first blog. All right, well, well said. I have nothing else to say with that one. You said (laughs) it very well. Thank you guys for watching and listening. And we just continue to hope that you are learning to strengthen your marriage. Marriage is work. Mm. It's work. And so even if you're not married, if you're single, we pray that you will invest into yourself, understand what it really means to be married, and then ask someone else who has a strong marriage to really tell you about marriage. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We'll talk to you on the next video. All right. Bye.